All right, welcome to Adobe Photoshop 2024. And today we're gonna to take a look at custom workspaces, how to set up Photoshop so it works. You will notice over here, we've got a toolbar and the toolbar can be changed. Mine's a custom toolbar. And this is one of the things we're gonna take a look at. Today. And the other over here are your windows, all right? So over here, we have this little icon and we can click on this and we can configure it for someone who's a painter and it's gonna have a bunch of different windows. If you look at mine, you can see I have a custom space. But if we wanted to just go to photography, we can click on photography and it's gonna give us this custom space like this. All right, so that's what we're gonna take a look at today. Not the most exciting thing, but in the long run, this is really gonna benefit you because you can get it set up exactly how you want. And if you ever accidentally change it, I'm gonna show you how to save presets so you can go back to how it was. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the toolbar. And for some reason, when I clicked on that, it moved the toolbar over here. So to move anything, it's very easy to do. But notice right up here, we've got these little teeny arrows, okay? These are basically an open and close. So if I click this, it opens it wider. If I click this, it closes it. So on these bigger ones, if I do this, it turns it into just a single icon or all the information. Um, what we want is I'm going to actually move this. So I'm just left clicking and dragging and I'm going to drag this over here and you see how that turns blue like that. That means it's in a location. So whenever you move any of these windows, when you get the blue line, it's going to pop that in place. Okay. So this is our toolbar. Now you'll notice I have a bunch of tools and it does not look like the default. And the reason is, is because normally, if you come up here and you look at this, I'm gonna hit that function key again. You see this little teeny tiny arrow? It's like a triangle pointing towards the bottom right. That means there's other tools in that same location, but underneath. So if I left click and hold, you'll see it shows me that, oh, the object selection tool is there too. Now, sometimes there can be multiple tools underneath that and I don't want them, which is the cloning tools. Usually all these tools are batched together with one of these little arrows and I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do first is show you how to make a custom toolbar. So you come up here to edit, you're gonna drop down, we see toolbar, we're gonna to click that and I can go restore to default. So I can hit that and bam, just like that, it's gonna start nesting them. And so you can see right here, now I've got all these, different tools that are gonna be cloned inside that spot healing brush, which I don't want. And if we come over here, I'll open this up, you can see these are how this is set up right here. So we've got the move tool, the move tool, then rectangular marquee tool, it's the next one down. So what this means right here is where I have all these in this little group, these mean they're all nested together. So if I don't want something nested together, like maybe the object selection tool, but in my case, it's going to be these healing brushes, I can pull them out. So I can come out here and say, hey, I want the remove tool in its own location. I want the spot healing brush in its own location. Healing brush, the patch tool, all right? Let's say that there's a tool that I don't use. I don't use the count tools. I can also take this tool and move it over to here and it's putting it in the extra tools. It's not deleting it. It's not removing it. Basically, you're just going to need to come over here to these three little dots and click this and these tools will be available. But I can go through all this information here and move out the tools that I want into single spaces. I can leave the tools that I want nested, which would be something like this and then I can create my own custom space. So once I'm done with that, I'll slide this over here. I can come over here and put save preset and I would give this a title. It would save it as a TBR, which is tools. You can see here are my other ones. I'm not gonna save it because I don't actually want this. And then we're done. So I can hit done and boom, that new toolbar would be set there exactly how I want it because I use that. And if I wanna switch, I can go to my toolbar. I can hit load preset. Here is my set. I'll click that. I'll hit done. And then boom, just like that, that custom toolbar is set up. 
If I want the extra tools, I click on this and you can see here all those extra tools that I don't really use, but are still available because I've moved them out of that location. That is how you create a custom toolbar. So when you look at my toolbar, it's gonna be different from the default. Don't get confused, but there's a reason. All right, the next one is a little bit more complicated. And these are these panels or windows that we see over here on the right hand side. Each one of these little tabs, so we've got the adjustment tab. If you don't see the adjustment tab, everything that is available is under window. Anything with a tick mark is already on the right side. So I have up adjustments, history, info, layers, properties. They're all up over here. If I wanted color up, I would just kick color and bam, you can see just like that, it popped color in there. So any window or panel you want, you add a tick mark under window. Now, how this is set up, we already talked that up here we've got these little double arrows and these can collapse these to make them smaller. So this is my adjustments. If I wanted adjustments when it's collapsed, I just click on it and it pops open. Okay, there's more stuff under here. If I want it, if I want this one, I click and I get properties. If I want them open as a single column, I can just open that. Also within these, notice we have tabs. So this is a tab, this is a tab. Let's find one with multiple tabs. Do we have anything with multiple tabs? No, so I'll make one with multiple tabs. So here we've got the info panel right here and the history panel. If I click on history, we see history. If I click on info, it shows info. So you can add multiple tabs to each one of these little windows that we see here. If you want to close or remove one, so I'm not using swatches or color, I can come in here. If I hit close, it's only gonna remove color because that's what's highlighted. But if I hit close tab group, it's gonna remove both color and swatches. So I'm gonna hit close tab group, boom, they're both gone. So the way you move these tabs around, and so let's say I didn't want info in with history, I wanted it in its own little space. I can left click and hold and drag up, okay? And then once I get that blue line, in this case, it's gonna between, put it between layers, which is this one up here in history. So if I do that, it's gonna put it in between those spaces. If I wanna move it over to another one, I can come over here, I could put it in between. So if I go here, notice it's all blue all around properties. That's gonna put it as a tab inside of properties, which is what I don't want. If I want it to put in between properties and adjustments, I can put it in between there on that blue line and it puts it in that space, all right? You can also move it to a new column. So if I want to start a new column, I go like this. We've got that vertical blue line. I let go and then now we have this new one, which is what I definitely don't want. So I'm gonna slide this back over here. That's gonna put it in with history and we're good to go, all right? So you can move these around and when there's something highlighted blue that is showing you the location that it's going in. I have this one closed because they're my actions and I don't use them very often. So I have two bars here. I'm on an iMac, so I have a lot of real estate to do this. If you're on a small laptop, having multiple columns open can be difficult because it really reduces the amount of space that you have over here. All right, so we've got the double arrows. We can move the different tabs and close things by either a single window or a group to get rid of them. So in this tutorial series, the ones that we're gonna be looking at are gonna be designed for working in photography. And so the ones that we're gonna have open are adjustments, layers, and you'll notice that adjustments only goes down to about here. There's no more stuff here. So I'm gonna come in here and I am gonna slide this up so we have less space. So you can go in between on those lines. There used to be a little symbol, like an up and down arrow symbol. It might not be showing because of my cursor. Let me turn this cursor off real quick to see if we get. Usually if you come here and you, it's just letting us move it, but it used to have like an up arrow and a down arrow on it as well. But all right, so we can move those spaces and convert them. So the way I have it is adjustments here. So this lets me click whatever layer adjustment I have. I know you don't understand that, but 
adjustments is one properties is super important you definitely need that i have it here i have a layers here and you're gonna sometimes have lots of layers and then i have the info in the history panel i very rarely use history so i have it nestled in here with the info this is the one that i use the most once you have this set up how you like it all you need to do is come up here hit new workspace give it a name and this new workspace can include the toolbar as well. So if you wanna include the toolbar, the menus and all that stuff and keyboard shortcuts, you can click all that stuff when you create it and then hit save. It doesn't have to be just for these windows It can include this information over here. And so that's how you set up a custom workspace. And I'll tell you, it's beneficial to set up uh, multiple ones. So when I'm doing text or type, um, I have a couple other windows in here that I like. So it's just easier for me to create two custom windows. One is for without type and one for stuff that I use with type. That's it on setting up custom workspaces. If you found this video help, could you please give us a thumbs up? If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.